Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another forecast discussion. We have a pretty well-advertised severe weather event, a multi-day severe weather event on tap starting next week, potentially as early as Sunday, but most likely on Monday through at least Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Starting off with multiple days in the southern plains here, you can see day five, which would be Monday here. The SPC has a 15% outline, a slight risk for parts of southeast Kansas down into the eastern half of Oklahoma into north central Texas. Then day six, much of the same shifts, maybe a tad east for Tuesday. Uh, and then for Wednesday, there is another 15% outline there shifted just a little bit more east. And then day eight, we could see things shift into the Midwest. So a multi-day severe weather event on tap for next week. It's been pretty well advertised by the models here. They've, there's been some pretty good agreement with the models for some time now, which is quite unusual. Oftentimes the models are, are you know, flip-flopping all the way up until uh, the event, at least for this far out. It's very rare to see this kind of confidence in such a multi-day severe weather event. So we're, I don't like to do these videos a lot this far out just because things often do change quite a bit. But I figure that this event, given that it's kind of the first major looking multi-day event for the Southern Plains in quite some time, that it would be worthwhile to take a look at some different models, kind of compare the two, the two main models, the GFS and the Euro model, kind of see what similarities, what differences they're showing and kind of get you in the mindset of thinking about severe weather for next week. So the best way we can kind of uh, look at the long range data is look at ensemble models. So we're going to look at the GFS ensemble models and the European ensemble system. And what ensemble means is basically it's, it's a bunch of different uh, iterations of the same model. So there's they do a little a bunch of different runs and they tweak a, a few of the parameters a little bit each time and they see what the outcome is and if, if you know all those ensemble members uh, converge on a single solution then you have much greater confidence uh, in that particular model uh, and so we're gonna look at the ensembles here first and then we'll take a look at the just the operational GFS and the European model uh, themselves and kinda compare the two and dig a little bit deeper into things but Overall, we're going to start with comparing the GFS ensemble members to the European ensemble members. And what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the mean. So you take all of the, the ensemble members and you kind of average them out. And this is what we're going to get. So we're going to take a look at 500 millibars first. So you can see here we've got a big trough, multi-day severe weather event across the southeast just kind of wrapped up. Is going to wrap up today. We saw a tornado this morning in Florida near St. Augustine. Uh, there's a few areas of slight risk out there today, but that's going to move off, and we're going to be done with severe weather for a bit until this weekend. And you can see that the GFS ensemble has the trough that's going to be the main player for next week's severe weather event start to dig down into the Pacific Northwest by about Friday evening. That continues to dig down, and the first day we want to keep an eye on is going to be Sunday. So you can see here we've got this kind of broad sort of trough here across the western half of the United States. Um, it's, it's more kind of this long wave trough. There's not really one focused area, at least at 500 millibars, that the GFS ensembles are showing. But we do have southwesterly flow aloft, and any little kink in the flow it could help initiate storms here. Uh, given decent uh, surface pattern and a de decent moisture quality at the surface. So w once we have southwest flow established here that we're going to have to start watching this. So Sunday would be the first potential day. Might be one of those days where you have kind of the day before the event begins and you have the supercell parameters in place but it's going to remain capped because the better moisture isn't quite there. So Sunday is going to be the first day to watch and then we're going to really have to watch Monday. And this is quite interesting. GFS ensembles have a, again, they kind of keep that just broad area of southwest flow in place across, basically extending from the desert southwest to the central and southern plains up into the Great Lakes region there. So pretty much just broad southwesterly flow, at least west-southwesterly flow. And uh, that could be uh, interesting uh, as far as the storm mode goes. Whenever we, whenever I see these kind of just broad southwesterly flow kind of days, I tend to think more supercells 
rather than a more linear mode. Of course, we'll take a look at that more in depth here in a little bit. But I always kind of uh, do a double take here when I see this kind of just broad southwesterly flow across the region. So we'll take a look at the euro now going through Monday. And again, this is going to be 500 millibars. So you see that current trough really digs and moves out of there. But you can see by Friday uh, evening, that trough, much like the GFS showed, going to be digging down into the Pacific Northwest. And then by Sunday evening, you can see much of the same here, a little bit more, I think, of a kink there in the flow up there into the Minnesota, Dakota's region. Uh, it's not going to be a player for our se potential severe weather on uh, Sunday. You can see much kind of a similar situation to the GFS, broad belt of kind of westerly, west southwesterly flow here across the central and southern plains. Again, I'm not sure that we're going to see enough of that moisture transport by this point to uh, see a, a significant severe threat, at least a notable severe threat, on Sunday. But we'll take a look at that in a second. You can see, kind of compare the two. Pretty similar situation here. This is the Euro. This is the GFS. You can see just a broad belt of, of west-southwesterly flow there. And then as we go to Monday, kind of the same thing. That kind of short wave moves out in the Great Lakes, and we start to see this kind of short wave here uh, impinge into the desert southwest, into the southern plains. And let's go forward a little bit to 0Z uh, Tuesday, which would be Monday evening. You can kind of see, we're kind of seeing much of the same, a little bit more ridging into the northern plains here on the Euro model here. So a little bit more ridging here, perhaps a little bit less chance for severe storms there with the Euro model. Um, not maybe as focused of a sort of shortwave uh, impinging into the region. You can see here with the GFS, a little bit more sort of kinks there in the region that may help get things going here as far as short waves go into the southern southern plains. The European more showing just kind of broad southwesterly flow, maybe a, a little bit of a, a few kinks in the flow there. So all in all, kind of broad southwesterly flow there. And as we go into Tuesday here, the trough really starts to eject. You can see the axis here on the GFS has moved basically over the Great Basin down into Arizona. And again, we continue to maintain that southwesterly flow into the central and southern plains. And much of the same on the European model. European model showing a little bit more of a negatively tilted system here. You can see that axis a little bit more negatively tilted, kind of centered over the same kind of region, the Great Basin area down into Arizona, into New Mexico. But a little bit more of a negative tilt on the European model, which means a little bit more of a mature trough. So I'm going to have to watch this sort of exit region here um, out ahead of this trough for severe thunderstorm development on Tuesday, which may be the main day of this event. Um, you can see here on the GFS a little bit more neutrally to positively tilted trough here, which honestly not going to make a whole lot of difference. Just because you have a slightly positively tilted trough instead of a you know more favorable neutrally or negatively tilted trough does not mean that significant severe weather will not accompany uh, this trough. Very similar solution here. Um, and the GFS has come into line with the European uh, ensemble members over the past few days. Previously, it was kind of a more, much more positively tilted trough, a little bit weaker, a little bit more progressive. And the European has been steadfast in showing a pretty significant severe weather setup. Negatively, strong negatively tilted trough here going into early next week, and, and the GFS is definitely now catching up with that idea. At least the ensembles are. So um, interesting to note, I think there will be Tuesday looking at this. Uh, the, just 500 millibars looks like it might be the main show here with this event. And then as we go through Wednesday, that trough continues to eject into the plains. You can see now some differences start to show up between the GFS and the European model. GFS showing... Uh, kind of a little bit more of neutrally tilted there. Strong southwesterly flow here rounding the base of that trough, but we're seeing kind of an open, more of an open wave there. Whereas on the Euro, we're seeing a little bit more negatively tilted, closed circulation here at 500 millibars. Very strong winds rounding the base of that trough. This is very much a textbook uh, setup for severe weather into the Midwest, so would not expect to see some sort of threat area there for which would be day eight, Wednesday. 
um, set up somewhere in there. Uh, excuse me, that would be day seven. And there is that day seven area for Wednesday there. Would not expect, would not be surprised to see that shifted a little bit farther north if these trends continue. But all in all, GFS ensembles and European ensembles showing a pretty potent system here with the European a little bit stronger with this system. And then by Thursday, kind of moves off the circulation at 500 millibars, kind of centered up into southern Canada there, into the Great Lakes region. And uh, we could see severe weather up into the northeast come Thursday before the system fully moves off on Friday. So let's go down to the surface here, kind of get a, kind of take a peek at what the surface pattern is showing. And so we'll start here with the GFS ensembles and we'll go through the day. So by Friday uh, evening, if you remember, we start to see that trough impinge into the Pacific Northwest. That's why we get surface load development up here into Canada. And then by Saturday evening, we, we're going to start to see pretty consistent surface load development day after day here across the central and southern plains. So Saturday, not going to be a threat. That moisture is going to be shunted down to the south. We won't see a severe threat on Saturday. But atmosphere is going to start to get primed here by Sunday. You can see we just get continued surface low development out here somewhere in eastern Colorado, northeast New Mexico, down into the Texas Panhandle. And you can see here that the GFS ensemble members are quite clustered here for Sunday. When we start to see these little numbers here, those are the individual members here showing the strength of that low. And uh, we're seeing them very much tightly clustered here somewhere across kind of that Oklahoma, New Mexico, Colorado triple point there. And if we go to the GFS for Sunday, or excuse me, the European model for Sunday, we're going to see much of the same. So you can see that surface low development on Saturday start, start to take place. European model, a little bit farther north, perhaps a little bit more spread out in the location of the surface low here, but does show kind of the same idea is the GFS here a low somewhere in southeast Colorado, maybe northeast New Mexico, somewhere out there. Again, the question is going to be, can we get moisture transport quickly enough up here into kind of western Oklahoma, Texas Panhandle, southwest Kansas, quickly enough um, on Sunday? That remains to be seen. We'll take a look at the moisture here in a second. Then we move on to Monday. We get much stronger surface low development as that southwesterly flow really gets entrenched aloft here across the region. You can see now the European model very much clustered across southeast Colorado here, um, tightly clustered, much stronger, 991 millibar surface low here, very strong surface low out here. And at least by Monday, we should see strong low level uh, moisture advection here into the southern plains. So Monday should be the first significant day for severe weather, given the strength of this low, given the positioning of that 500 millibar trough perhaps embedded short waves in there. And again, I'm definitely getting the butterflies here for Monday and Tuesday because we're seeing that kind of just broad southwesterly flow here across the region. If we get just a little subtle short, short wave, that would mean the forcing is much weaker, perhaps a more supercellular mode, uh, and that would increase the tornado threat. And just given this very strong signal for a surface low here in southeast Colorado, would expect there to be ample moisture, ample instability. And you can see the same thing on the GFS here. A little bit farther south maybe, still tightly clustered, a little bit weaker of a surface low, but nonetheless showing a pretty decent, well-defined surface low here into northeast New Mexico, southeast Colorado. So GFS showing much of the same, but not quite as strong as the European model. Again, the European model has been much stronger with this system for the past several days here, whereas the GFS is now kind of playing catch up with this system. So good news here. Um, at least from a chasing perspective, is that the GFS and the European model kind of on board with the same kind of scenario. European model a little bit stronger. Then we go into Tuesday, which again I think could be the banner day of this severe weather event, at least for the southern, southern plains. And again, we see just consistent surface low development as that trough just really parks itself across the western half of the continental U.S. And again, when we get that southwesterly flow, traversing the Rockies, we get surface low development to the lee of the Rockies, and we just see continued surface low development here. Euro showing ni a 990 millibar low out there in southeast Colorado. We start to see a little bit more dispersion here across the region 
um, here, but um, that still is showing a somewhat clustered kind of dispersion here across that same sort of area for Tuesday. And as that trough ejects, I think that surface load development will be stronger, a little bit more efficient. And you can see by Tuesday, the GFS is a little bit stronger, still a little bit weaker than the European ensembles here. But starting to see, we still see pretty solid um, agreement between the two ensemble models that there's going to be a surface loss somewhere in here with that trough starting to eject into the southern plain. So Tuesday may be the banner day here. And then when we go into Wednesday, we start to see a little bit more dispersion here on some of the models. Um, here on the GFS, a little bit progressive here, that surface low weakens, occludes, and is up into east central Iowa by Wednesday evening. You can see the dispersion here is much greater. These Again, these little numbers are the different ensemble members. And so quite a bit of dispersion here with the GFS, even showing a second sort of low center down here into South Texas, whereas the European model, um, its ensemble member showing pretty solid confidence, solid clustering here uh, for a surface low somewhere in western Iowa. Again, that would um, allow a severe threat to materialize for up here into the Midwest and the Great Lakes region. So European model maintains a very strong surface low here, 995 millibars. So GFS still a little bit more progressive with the system, a little bit weaker with this system overall than the European ensembles are, but still We've still got pretty solid agreement for this system and continued surface load development throughout the kind of sun Saturday through Wednesday time period. And, um, you know, the strength of the low, the um, sort of positioning of the trough will definitely change as we go through um, the coming days leading up to this event. But overall, pretty solid agreement. That's why SPC has gone with these three uh, straight days of severe weather risk areas here on their day four through eight outlook. So let's look at moisture here. Uh, we're going to go to the moisture and take a look at the mean of the ensemble members here for each. And so we'll start here with the GFS. So you can see Saturday, nothing going to happen, even though we did see some semblance of surface low development out here into southeast Colorado by Saturday, moisture just is not there. And you can see that on the European model as well. All that cold front has shunted this moisture off into the Gulf here. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get this moisture back. You can see GFS is a little bit more bullish with moisture return here on Saturday, whereas the European model still shunts that best moisture well down into the Gulf, a little bit somewhat of return up there into the Texas Gulf Coast region. So, so that is something to note. You're going to have to watch that for sure. Then this is Sunday. Uh, again, we do GFS does bring the 60s back up into even far northern Oklahoma there. European model, not so much into the mid to upper 50s there. So definitely some differences in the moisture return here. GFS, despite being a little bit more, a little bit weaker, a little bit more progressive with the system, is bringing the, the moisture up into... Uh, even northeast Oklahoma there. So the GFS solution does verify we may see an outside shot at severe storms on Sunday. European model likely going to remain capped here for the day on Sunday until that better moisture returns. Then for Monday, we start to see a really sharp dry line down there into southern Oklahoma, south Texas, and uh, as far as the European model goes, now we're starting to see a little bit of agreement in that that moisture is really going to start streaming northward there. Pretty uh, well-defined dry line there into uh, eastern Oklahoma, into central Texas. And again, the placement of these features is going to change. Uh, oftentimes, these troughs will slow down a little bit. Once they get closer to shore, we can better sample them. Close to the west coast, we can better sample them. So that may things may slow down a little bit, bringing western Oklahoma and northwest Texas into play. Again, this is just kind of, this is a long-range forecast model. Uh, you know, we're not seeing, we can't really pick out the fine-scale details that we need to make a, a truly um, specific forecast, but at least we can see the background pattern now. So things may slow down a little bit. The placement of these features will be different in the next few days. But overall, we can get a sense of what the pattern is showing. Again, for Tuesday, very strong, tight dry line there on the Euro. Much of the same for the GFS. Again, the European model a little bit stronger of a surface low.
So maybe a little bit tighter of a um, dry line there than the GFS, but still kind of much of the same sort of pattern here. Dry line setting up across Oklahoma down into Texas on both models. And so the overall background pattern should continue to be there for severe storms. GFS kind of shunts the moisture off, does not bring the moisture up for Wednesday, even though we have that potent surface low up there into the Midwest. The European model does kind of keep things up there a little bit up into Illinois, Indiana. Again, this is just kind of a general sort of look at the pattern. This may change. We may get 60s all the way up here into Iowa. And I would not be surprised given that such a strong surface low up there into Iowa, especially on the European model. Would not be surprised to see 60s up here into Iowa come Wednesday. But for now, at least we're seeing several days of severe weather. And um, yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, the GFS and the European model showing pretty solid confidence. A couple takeaways. The GFS is definitely a little bit weaker, a little bit uh, more progressive with this system than the European model. And something to note is that the European model has been quite persistent with this sort of strong, sort of negatively tilted trough um, encroaching into the plains for next week, whereas the GFS has been a little bit more progressive, quite a bit weaker for the last several days. Now appears to be playing catch up a little bit with the European model. So we'll see which model wins out. Um, the GFS eventually does go full on what the European model is showing with those really strong surface lows, strong uh, negatively tilted trough there. But overall, there is enough confidence to know that there's a, going to be a significant severe threat, potentially starting as early as Sunday, most likely Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, perhaps even into Thursday for, for parts of the upper Midwest into the Northeast. But um, just uh, wanted to do a little bit of an overview video for now, uh, kind of get you get your mindset prepared for what we might see come early next week. So that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.